Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. All praise to the Most High Yah. All esteem to His Son Yeshua. This is your brother L. Victory, success, and destiny. Let's go ahead and get into these precepts. Yesterday, I was thinking about something, and what I came to realize is that we living in a time and a generation right now where a lot of people is indecisive. It's an indecisive, I don't know, maybe unstable type of spirit that's on this generation. Where a lot of people seem not to know which way that they want to go, which decision that they want to make. It's a lot of uncertainty on a lot of people. I don't know if it stems from a lack of confidence. I don't know if it stems from a lack of knowledge. It could be a mixture and mingling of all these things. But the case remains that a lot of people are indecisive. And that's what I want to speak on today is coming at that indecisive spirit it's a spirit on a lot of people that they walk around in a constant haze of maybe uh confusion i don't know you know which way to go that seems to be the state of a lot of people's minds so to the point where that confusion stagnates them or they'll make a decision out of fear or out of complacency and they'll do it not even knowing that the whole time they've been underneath a spell or a spirit of uncertainty, of shakiness. It comes a time where a person just got to let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's what I want to speak on today. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Most of y'all that know me personally, you know that I'm the type of person I look for a yes or a no no matter what it's pertaining to it could be whether in ministry whether in business whether personal give me a yes or give me a no i'm not the type of individual that does the maybe i don't know uncertain type of thing it comes a time where when a person is an adult they should know what they want and what they don't want they should know where they want to go and where they don't want to go so there comes a time where a person has to be decisive, especially in this time, because we're approaching a time where people are going to have to choose, where you're going to have to make a decision and stick to that decision. We come into a time in these last days where you're going to have to let your yes be yes and your no be no. And I'm not just saying that we say the words yes and say the words no, and then our actions show something totally different. I'm talking about being a people who let your yes be yes and your actions back up what you just got done saying. I'm talking about us being a people who let your no mean no and your actions back up what you saying. Don't be an individual out here that you say yes with your lips and with your mouth, but then your actions indicate no. Don't be somebody out here that says no with your lips and with your words, but then your actions say yes. Let your words match your actions. Let your, let your yes be yes and your no be no. This is the type of people that the Most High and the Messiah have always told us to be. Even in the Torah, Moses said that, behold, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. So even Moses was saying, look, make a decision. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. The most high is not an individual that's going to sit here and wait on our indecision because the clock is ticking. Time is of the essence. We don't have all this time to be sitting here uncertain, talking about, I don't know, I'm confused. Maybe, you know, looking all around, spinning all around. Hopping around like a rabbit, not knowing what's going on. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Make a decision. Come out of the confusion. Come out of the uncertainty. Step forward as a man or as a woman. Say what's on your heart. And then once you say it and make that contract, stick to that contract that you've made. Stick to that yes answer that you've given or stick to that no answer that you've given. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's the type of people we got to be in these last days. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. The Messiah says, let your communication be yea, yea, or nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. What the Messiah was saying is let your yes be yes and let your no be no. 
You don't have to swear. You don't have to, you know, be all extra about it. Look, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Make a decision. Make a decision. Choose one. That's the thing about decisions. You can only choose one. Whenever you're presented with options or decisions, you can only choose one. So make a decision. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. I understand that in some situations there's time that it takes to think over it, to fast over it, to pray over it. But eventually a decision has to be made. You got to let your yes be yes and your no be no. The same thing that the Messiah just got done saying in Matthew chapter 5 verse 37, Enoch also said in 2nd Enoch 49 3, where he says, if there is no truth in men, let them swear by the words, yea, yea, or else nay, nay. So basically what Enoch was saying is the same thing that the Messiah said when he said, let your yes be yes or your no be no, because he was saying here that. A person who is undecided, uncertain, confused, that's a sign that there's no truth in that person. Because have you ever been around people of truth, people who know who they are, people who have no doubts or insecurities about who they are? There are people who always step forward with a yes or a no. So they demand that same level of clarity, confidence and security in others. So if I come to you with absolute security and confidence and I tell you I'm going to do something and I perform it and do it, you know that I'm a person that my yes means yes, my no means no. So if I come to you with that level of security and that level of strength and confidence, then it's demanded back from the other parties involved as well. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. This is the time where we have to do away with all that vague um, you know, guessing games and doubting games and changing our mind and all this and that. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. I'm the type of person and this is the type of person that the Most High and the Messiah would have us to be that we cut straight to the point. Our yes is yes and our no is no. Otherwise, if we're getting uncertainty or a shaky, I don't know type of vibe from the other party, then I really don't do business with those type of individuals. I don't even want to fellowship with them in my personal life because if they're uncertain about small things, if they're uncertain about the, the littlest things where their yes is, is not yes and their no is not no, how can we, how can we trust that individual to go and endure to the end? Look back in the book whenever Elijah was talking to the people. What did he tell them? Remember when he was um, approaching the people and he was about to slay all those priests of Baal? Remember what um, he had asked the people, the question that he asked them about what side they were on? Let's go to 1 Kings 18, 20. He said, so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long will you halt between two opinions? So Elijah was saying, look, either your yes is going to be yes or your no is going to be no. How long will you falter and go back and forth? For, I, I don't know. And, you know, I, 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 I'm confused. I don't know what to do. How long will you halter between two opinions? If the most high be the most high, then follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. So Elijah was basically saying, make a decision. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. How long will you falter between two opinions? Meaning how long will you be uncertain about all these choices before you? When will you just step up as a man or a woman and make a decision, stand on it, stick with it? and embrace that decision no matter if it leads to success failure whatever the case may be this is about us owning our decisions as men and women and people of the most high let your yes be yes and your no be no stop with all this uncertainty and trying to procrastinate and buy time to you know uh make people stall out and, and wait on you to make a decision Many situations are not life and death, but there are some situations that are life and death. And every decision we make can lead to life or death. So even though a decision may seem small, 
a whole lot of small decisions make a can equal a big decision you see what i mean so even the small decisions that you think is insignificant you still cannot be uncertain and confused whenever you make the decision you have to let your yes be yes or your no be no because people don't got all day to sit around and wait on you to make up your mind let your yes be yes and your no be no the most high and the messiah do not have all day to sit and wait on you make up your mind yes they are patient yes they are merciful but there comes a time where as men and women we have to let our yes be yes and our no be no so that people can move on or so people can deal with you in the aspect that you've agreed to deal with them on let your yes be yes and your no be no let's go to matthew chapter 21 verse 28 through 31 listen to this parable the messiah set forth he said but what do you think a certain man had two sons and he came to the first and said son go work today in my vineyard and he answered and said i will not but afterward he repented and went and he came to the second and said likewise and he answered and said i go sir and he did not go which one of them did the will of his father? And they said unto him, the first son. Isn't that interesting? So right here is letting us know that actions will always outweigh words. You had one son who said, yes, I will go. But then he didn't go. Then you had another son who said, no, I will not go. And he went. So the one whose actions said yes was the one that did the father's will. Likewise, it's the same thing with us. That's what I was saying earlier. It's the actions that show whether our yes is yes or whether our no is no. So we have to be a people who show yes with our actions. Or if we choose no, we need to be a people who choose no with our actions. We have to do this. And there's two sides of this coin. There's two parties involved. You have the person who presented the the option or the decision that a person can make and then you have the person who has had the decision or option presented to them now let's first take the perspective of the person who has presented the option or the decision they come and offer you something whatever it may be whether it's business ministry relationship um husband wife contract whatever the case may be they present this option or decision to you so it's in your hands whether to say yay or whether to say nay, whether to say yes or no. Now, what ends up happening is sometimes when people do not have the purest of intentions, what they'll want to do is keep that option on the table just in case something else doesn't work out. So they don't want to commit themselves and say yes or no. They want to keep the person that presented the option kind of around and close just in case they decide to deal with them later on. You know, but then they'll go and pursue other options or decisions, N not committing themselves to the person that gave them that option. But here's the problem with that. That's selfish because while you're doing all this other things, pursuing other options, that person that presented the option to you originally, they can move on to bigger and better things and move on to other things. Because have you ever thought you're not the only person that they presented that option to? It may not all be about you. They may not be presenting that option to you for any selfish reasons towards you. It may be a, another agenda or motive that they have that's bigger than you. So you can't always, whenever you're making a decision, always see it as about you. Sometimes it's bigger than you. So that's unfair to the person that's presented the option when you trying to keep them around as an option just in case something else don't work out no you need to let your yes be yes or your no be no to that particular situation now that's how it can affect the person who gave you the option here's how it can affect you eventually what can take place is if you constantly deal with individuals in this type of manner to where you're uncertain you're confused you don't step up as a man or a woman to make decisions and let your yes be yes and your no be no what it can do is form a bad characteristic within you and it can give you a reputation as a person who is not a man or woman of their word and in the, in the long run what can happen is you can come along a situation or an opportunity that you really would love to be a part of but what has taken place is your reputation has gone before you and that opportunity that uh may want to present itself it may not want to deal with you or even give you an option because 
it knows you to be somebody that's shaky, uncertain, a person who is out here and your yes does not mean yes and your no does not mean no. So you could end up blocking yourself from future opportunities because you become known as a person that's iffy, shaky, fickle, and can't stand up as a man or woman and make a decision and let your yes be yes and your no be no. And you don't want that type of stigma on your name. You don't want that type of characteristic or trait to be in your heart. You don't want to be a person that's unstable. You see what I mean? You don't want to be a person that's unstable because according to scripture, being unstable and wavering and I don't know, that's the sign of a man that will never receive anything from the most high. James chapter one, uh, verse seven, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the most high for a double minded man is unstable in all her in all his ways so that goes for the man for the brothers those of y'all brothers out here that's listening who may have that uh that instability and that i don't know type of attitude that goes for the man now for the woman who has that i don't know maybe unstable uncertain type of attitude listen to what it says about the indecisive woman proverbs 5 5 says her feet go down to death her steps take hold on hell lest thou should ponder the path of life her ways are movable you cannot know them so what it says about the woman who is indecisive, it says that her indecisiveness will make her feet go down to death and her steps take hold of hell. There is a, another proverb that says there is a way that seems right, but the end is the way of death. There may be a decision that seems right, but its end is the way of death. So here it's saying that the woman that is indecisive, her steps are leading to hell and death because she's constantly taking the way that seems right. In, in other words, she's in a constant state of confusion, uncertainty, stagnation. She doesn't step up and let her yes be yes or her no be no. So these are characteristics. I gave you scriptures of both a man and a woman in scripture who are indecisive and who have that uncertain, unstable type of spirit. Here in Proverbs 5, 6, it says her ways are movable, meaning that she's constantly switching up, constantly changing. Her yes does not mean yes, and her no does not mean no. These are the type of people that we need to steer clear from because all they will do is bring confusion. They will never bring certainty to, to a situation. So those of you out there who may be facing a particular decision right now, I would encourage you to let your yes be yes or your no be no. Approach all parties involved and let them know whether it's going to be a yes or a no to a particular situation. You see what I'm saying? It's time for us to step up and make decisions as men and women. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. No longer continue to go on out here in a state of indecision. Now, here's something else that's important. Before we make these type of decisions, we need to know how to get answers from the most high. And the problem is a lot of people don't know how to get answers from the most high. First, what we need to do whenever we're seeking answers from the most high is cut off all other voices and opinions that's trying to inflict and penetrate into our mind. That means cutting off the TV, cutting off the movies, cutting off the radio and do like Queen Esther did. Before Queen Esther made her decision of what she was going to do before she went in and approached the king, she fasted for three days in total silence, meaning no TV, no entertainment, no, you know, being all around at parties and gatherings and stuff because she knew doing that would cloud her decision making. So she just wanted to spend three days in just raw fasting to the most high in total quietness so she could hear the most high's voice clearly. And after she knew what decision she was going to make, then she approached the king boldly. All right. This is the type of mentality we need to have to be able to hear clearly from the most high like Esther did. So then we can go approach whoever it is involved 
in this decision that we're about to make and give them a clear answer on what we're going to do, whether our yes is going to be yes or our no is going to be no. So I'm not saying be in a rush to make a decision without hearing from the most high first. I'm just saying that once you've gotten a clear word from the most high of what he has instructed you to do, don't sit there in a state of indecision or procrastination trying to wait and, you know, keep keep all your options close to you before you make that decision no step up as a man or woman and make that decision let your yes be yes and your no be no and then own that decision and embrace that decision after you make it but we have to brothers and sisters get to the point where our yes is yes and our no is no because a time is coming where the adversary is going to present an option you hear what i'm saying the adversary is going to present an option and we're either going to say yes to him or we're going to say no to him. Revelation 13, 16 says, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the number of the beast or the number of his name. So an option is going to be presented to every human being on earth of who they're going to follow. Just like in the days of Elijah, when he told them, do not falter between two opinions any longer, but make a decision. Let your yes be yes or your no be no because like i said in this generation what we have we have a lot of individuals who know what's best for them they know what situation that they should say yes to they know it in their heart of hearts but oftentimes what takes place is they'll end up choosing the thing or the situation or the person that's wrong for them even though they know that situation or that person is wrong for them they'll choose it anyway because a lot of times they don't feel like they're good enough for the better option they don't feel like they're good enough for it because they have a low self-esteem about self so they choose the lesser or the lower path because they feel like it would be easier and less um less accountability on them less would be expected of them in that situation that they chose that was the lower you see what i'm saying so oftentimes that's what we see take place as well so when it comes to this this decision making clearing up all the confusion letting your yes be yes and your no be no it's really not hard this is this is manhood and womanhood 101 you see what i'm saying we should be at the point now where our yes means yes and our no means no. I shouldn't even have to come really do a discussion about this because this should already be understood. So brothers and sisters, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Make a decision. Shabbat Shalom.